God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Amen. To Victorious Life Fellowship Church. Amen. Praise God. We're excited to have you come into the room. Amen. We just bless God for you this morning. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Bishop Darion White. Amen. Here. Amen. To bring forth the word of life on this morning. Amen. And so we're just excited about what God is doing. Amen. B Church, we welcome you into the sanctuary. Amen. And I want you to know that wherever the presence of the Lord is, that becomes your church. Amen. So we are grateful for you to come online. Amen. And be a part of our service this morning. Amen. So God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. We're going to we'll see four people that are online. Amen. Good to see. Good to see you online. Make some comments. Let me know you're here. Amen. We're going to give it a few more minutes and then we'll um, we'll get prepared to get started. But we are so blessed and privileged to have you in our midst. Amen. We have our first lady behind the camera and we have a special treat for you this morning. Amen. So you, we want you to stick around. Amen. And stay to the end of the service because, amen, there's something I'm going to do at the end of the service that's going to really bless your heart. Amen. So we are grateful. Amen. Amen. God bless you, uh, Minister Minister Ward and Elder 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 Finch. Amen. Thank God for you joining us. Amen. Amen. So glad to have you all coming in online. Amen. God is good. Praise God. Praise God. And so we are grateful to have you. Amen. This morning, what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Good to see you, Elder Monroe, Sister Robinson. Amen. Sister James. Good to have y'all. Amen. Amen. Elder Elanda, amen. Good to have you this morning, amen. We're going to give it another minute or so, and then we'll get started, amen, around about 11.03. But we are so grateful, amen, for all of you joining in. Sister Smith, God bless you, amen. Sister Darlene Jones, God bless you this morning, amen. Don't forget to like and to share this morning, amen. Sister Lisa Scarlett, God bless you. Good to have you this morning, amen, amen. So many of y'all are coming in, so we are grateful, amen. Pastor Motto, good to have you this morning, Amen. God is good. God is good. Praise God. Amen. So we are getting there. We are getting there to the number that we need to be at, Sister Benton. Good to see you this morning. Amen. God is so good to us. God is a keeper. Amen. Many of y'all tuned in to see how I was looking, but look at God. God is good. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. God is so good to us, so we are excited. Amen. 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 Deacon Smith, good to have you online. Amen. As well. Praise God. So what we're going to do if it's okay with you. Amen. Sister Stephanie, God bless you. Amen. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to prepare to go into prayer. Amen. And so we are grateful for the opportunity to pray. I want to lift up. Amen. Sister Miles, God bless you. I want to lift up some families. Amen. Um, this morning, I want us to remember the Diggs family in our prayers. Amen. This is um, Sister Susan Diggs and Sister Renee Garrett's uh, father passed this week. So we want to keep them Lift it up in prayer. Amen. And so we want to pray for all those, praise God, who are battling, amen, this COVID virus. Amen. This thing is no joke, but we serve a God who is able. Amen. And so we're going to pray for them. Also, I want us to make a special prayer for our young people. Amen. I, I don't know if y'all know this, but when I was growing up, I would interact with my friends and everything at school. And so we want to pray for them against the spirit of depression. Amen. That God will lift up their spirits and encourage them during this season. Amen. And so we're going to do some things for our young people next Saturday that will definitely encourage them. And I want you to be a part of that. Amen. So we are grateful. We're going to go into prayer this morning. Don't forget to like and share. Amen. And so also let us know if you're visiting. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Amen. We'd be so glad. Amen. To welcome you into the room. We have such a loving church, just a loving group of leaders. And so we're grateful for them and their presence for all those who checked on me this week to see how I was doing, thank you so much. Amen. Praise God. God is a keeper and he is a deliverer. So, amen. Amen. Sister Brenda Smith, God bless you. So let's go into prayer, if you would. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to come into your presence. God, I thank you right now that the power of the Holy Ghost is present. Because you said, where well, two or three are gathered in your name. There will you be in the midst of us. And so, Father, while you're in the midst of us, we might as well pull on you, God. Father, we might as well pull on you for everything that we stand in need of, God. And, Father, we just bless your holy name this morning. Hallelujah. We give you glory right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you will free us from sickness, from disease, from infirmity, Lord, that it shall not be our portion, God. Father, I thank you that your word is alive and true in the lives of your people, God. And, Father, 
I thank you right now that everyone that's under the sound of my voice, everyone that's watching me now, Lord, Father, I ask that you would protect them and keep them, Lord. I ask that you would bless them and prosper them unto every good work, God. Father, I thank you for even the doors that you've already opened for your people, Lord. How you've given them cars, oh God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name that you're a good God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you heal, you deliver, you set free, God. And Father, even this morning, Lord, we lift up glory to God. Sister Susan Diggs and Sister Renee Garrett, Lord, we lift them up in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, minister to them in the loss of their father, God. Father, comfort the entire family, oh God. And Father, we just thank you right now for your presence in their lives, oh God. Father, we thank you, glory to God, for Sister Renee Sears' mom, Lord. Continue to heal, deliver, and set her free in her body, Lord. Father, we thank you for all of our elderly, Lord. Protect them, hallelujah, from this virus. Keep them and deliver them, Lord. Father, we pray for everyone that's battling, hallelujah, the symptoms of this virus, God. Father, we cancel out every plan of the enemy, Lord, and let him know, glory to God, that this storm will not stop us, God, but there is a word from you, God. And Father, we thank you even this morning, oh God, that we're lifting up all of our young people, Lord, those who are not able to be around their classmates, who are not able to be around, glory to God, their friends, oh God. Father, I pray right now that the spirit of joy, hallelujah, the spirit of happiness, glory to God, hallelujah, will replace the spirit of depression. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Let them learn how to pray, Lord. Let their parents teach them how to get in contact with you, Lord. Keep them uplifted. Keep them encouraged, oh God. In the name of Jesus, even as they learn, God, some of them don't learn well on their, on their own, God. But I thank you right now for the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that will illuminate their understanding, that will illuminate their wisdom and their knowledge, God. Father, we just thank you right now for their lives, Lord. We even pray for the parents, hallelujah, who have to go to work and then leave, the, leave that young person alone, glory to God, to navigate this virtual learning on their own, God. I thank you right now. Father, that you will cover the home under your blood, oh God. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now for what you're doing in my life and in my body, God. I give you glory right now, Father. I'm not able to do this uh, except you anoint me. <laughs> glory to God. And Father, I thank you right now, even that soul that's listening today, that stands in need of deliverance, God. I pray deliverance over them now in Jesus' name, God. I pray salvation over them now in Jesus' name. And I issue an edict to the enemy to let him know, glory to God, that you cannot stop what God has started. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you right now. Have your way, Holy Ghost, and we'll be so careful as to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Lord. I thank you for Brother Oheen, God, heal his body now, even while he's in the hospital battling this virus. God, touch him in Jesus' name. And God, we give you glory right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together real quick. Amen. Our beautiful first lady is going to come at this time and give us a song. Amen. We haven't heard her in a minute, but God is going to bless you. Amen. As she sings this song of Zion. Come on, first lady, with your fine self. Come on, give God some praise this morning. He's worthy to be praised. We thank God for the opportunity to be able to worship him on this morning. Hallelujah. He is so wonderful. Come on, wherever you are, lift your hands, begin to worship Jesus. Come on, bow in his presence. Bow down and worship him. Hallelujah, worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah, worship him. Oh, worship him. Bow down and worship him. Entering. Oh, entering. Everybody help me sing it. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. 
wherever we are and we invoke his name, that place becomes holy ground. Amen. So we are grateful. Amen. Thank God for our first lady and the Lord using her. Amen. In the way that he did. I remember when I first saw her singing at 14, 15 years old and praise God and she could sing. Uh, amen. Then and, and the Lord has blessed her to be able to to sing now. So we are grateful for the opportunity Amen. To be together in ministry and to be together as long as we have been together. I thank God. Amen. For all the birthday love that y'all showed me this week. Amen. Thank you, VLFC. Y'all are awesome. Amen. All the calls, all the text messages. So I'm grateful. Amen. I, I think they're, they've been telling me some donations have been made. So thank you so much for showing so much love. I know these are unusual times and you would be able to see me face to face. And be able to hug me, but we're just dealing with some different things right now. But God is with us. Amen. Amen. So if you would, we're going to go right into the word of God. We have a somewhat of a lengthy text, but we're going to go get through it. Amen. Acts chapter 27, verses 9 through 14. And then we'll go over to Mark chapter 4, verse 37 through 39. So we're going to start at Acts 27, verses 9 through 14. Amen. It says, uh, now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. And he said unto, him, to, and said unto them, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Verse 12. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to finish and there to winter, which is in a haven of Crete, and lie toward the southwest and northwest. Verse 13. And when the south wind blew softly, Supposing they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Verse 14. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called a Euroclidon. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 37 through 39. Verse 37 says, Mark 4, verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, Jesus being him, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind. <laughs> Let me say that again. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. I want to use for a thought this morning, if we could, out of both passages. This storm can't stop me. This storm can't stop me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, for the richness of your word, take your word, brand it in our hearts, God. Even as you said in your scripture, Lord, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. God, unctionize your manservant that I may preach under the auspices and control of the Holy Ghost, and out of my own ability or my own will. God, I thank you, Lord, that you will take glory to God, hallelujah, this body of clay, Lord, and use it for your glory. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for every hearer, God. In the name of Jesus, that you will bless them this morning, God. And they will not just be hearers only, hallelujah, but they will be doers of your word. And Father, we thank you right now that the Bible declares that the grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen, amen. Uh, amen. This storm can't stop me. Amen. This storm can't stop me. So, um, briefly, uh, if you allow me 20 minutes or so, I just want to talk. Um, our text this morning is coming out of the book, Glory to God of Acts. Our text in the book of Acts is really surrounding Paul's journey to Rome. Prior to those on the ship encountering the storm,
Paul advises them not to sell. But you know how we do sometimes, glory to God. We dismiss the word of God, hallelujah, given to us by the man of God, glory to God. Then when we get in trouble, those of us who have good sense know how to repent, glory to God. While others overtaken with pride will try to work out that which was never intended to work out in the first place, amen. So the best remedy I can give you is to listen to your leader, amen. So the Bible says in Acts 27 that against Paul advisement, they sailed towards Rome anyhow, glory to God. And the reason they sailed against Paul's advice was that the Bible says that a soft wind blew to make them think it was okay to do what Paul told them not to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil will lure you in in order to turn you out. <laughs> Never put how things look above what God has said. Amen. Things may look like they are going to work out, but you must remember that God knows your end from your beginning. Glory to God. So you have to trust the word of God. So, so the text tells us that in the midst of their journey, they encountered a storm called Euroclidon. Now, this Euroclidon was a northeast wind, glory to God. And when studying this Euroclidon, scientists believed that it was a storm that was similar to a typhoon. Now, a typhoon is a type of hurricane that can occur out on the sea. It can also be called a whirlwind. You're with me, glory to God. So when we look at this in the spirit realm, glory to God, we have to understand that it is a type of storm that's designed to knock you off course. Glory to God. It is a storm that will try and pick you up, watch this, whirl you around and drop you off in a location that is in opposition to where God, glory to God, told you to go. You remember the story of Jonah? The Bible says that God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah gets on a boat going to Tarshish. If you study your geography, you'll find that Tarshish is in the total opposite direction, glory to God, of Nineveh. Mm -hmm. So the enemy, glory to God, will try to lure you in a different direction. But don't let the storm you're in cause you to change directions. Glory to God. Stay the course. I don't know who that was for. But now, when we look at it, we, we have to understand that the one thing that the apostle Paul had is what we have as well. Paul had a word from God. God had told Paul that he would stand before Caesar in Rome. So no matter what, glory to God, type of storm that arose between the time that, glory to God, God told him between the time that he got to Rome, Paul knew that he had to go to Rome, glory to God. Mm -hmm. And he knew that that storm couldn't stop him. If God gave you a word, watch this, if God told you that you would own a home one day, glory to God, no matter what storm arises, glory to God, between the time God told you and the time that you're sitting down in the lawyer's office signing the papers, you need to know that that storm cannot stop you, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. Whatever God told you he's going to do in your life, I want you to know there's not a storm big enough, there's not a storm bad enough that can stop God's word from coming to pass in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even COVID-19 can't stop God's word from manifesting in my life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. COVID-19 can't stop God's word from manifesting in your life. Glory to God. And so, so let's, let's, let's look, at, look at the text in Mark and then I'm almost ready to go home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, a good preacher closed at least four times. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in the text in Mark, we Glory to God. And you'll see that mm, there was a reason why I gave you both texts this morning. And although they can preach independent of one another, there's a certain level of congruency in between both texts that I want to draw your attention to. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to his disciples in Mark 4, 35, he said, let us go to the other side. Now, what's amazing to me is that it's almost as if Jesus says, we're going over to the other side. Then he gets into the ship, goes down to the, to the bottom of the ship, and goes to sleep. The Bible says on a pillow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He, he knew, watch this, he knew that his <coughs> word provided the support for the action that he took. Meaning that his word, glory to God, would support him sleeping on the ship. <laughs> glory to God. So God's word will support whatever you're doing, glory to God, as long as you're operating within the confines of God's word. Hallelujah. Jesus knew, watch this. He knew once 
he said we're going over to the other side, nothing could stop him from getting there, so he might as well take a nap. <laughs> Glory to God. If God has told you your destination, and you know it was God, you just need to hit the cruise control and take a nap. <laughs> you just need to set it and forget it. Glory to God. Come on, type, set it and forget it. Glory to God. If God has told you your destination, set it and forget it. No matter what happens, Glory to God, no matter how bumpy the flight gets, no matter how rough the road gets, set it and forget it. Glory to God. So a couple years ago, a couple years ago, I watched a movie called Passengers. And it, 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 the movie Passengers was about, glory to God, about people who were traveling from Earth to this planet that was some 90 years, some 90 light years away from Earth. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the movie, they had these pods that would preserve them until they got to their destination. Are you with me? So when God gives you a word and you take that word by faith, it's like having one of those pods, glory to God. His word will preserve you <laughs> until you get to the destination, glory to God, he told you to be at. Amen. That's why you can tell the storms of your life, you can't stop me. Mm -hmm. Now, glory to God, in that movie, Passengers, Something went wrong with their pods. There was a part where man, something went wrong with his pods, glory to God, and it woke them up before they got to their destination. Spiritual storms are designed to disrupt your atmosphere before you get to your destination to hinder you from getting there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm preaching to myself this morning, glory to God. Hallelujah. So spiritual storms are designed to disrupt your atmosphere, glory to God. But I stopped by to tell you this morning that even if, glory to God, the storm disrupts your atmosphere, if you focus more on the word you got from God, hallelujah, than the storm, you'll walk on the very water that the enemy intended to drown you with. Good God Almighty. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to say that again. If you focus on God and his word more than the storm, you'll walk on the very water that the enemy wanted to use to drown you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes, now, sometimes I, I talk to God just like I'm talking to you. I talk to him just like I'm talking to you. I tell the Lord, I say, Lord, I thank you for the word you gave me. But sometimes I would like to have a weather forecast to accompany the word that you gave me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me explain what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God told me, he says, look, you're going to make it through this COVID-19, glory to God, and you're going to come out of it with victory. You're going to come out of it better than you went in. <laughs> But he doesn't tell me, glory to God, that I'm going to lose my pastor, Bishop Fain. He doesn't tell me that. He doesn't tell me that my wife is going to contract the virus. He doesn't tell me that. He doesn't tell me that I'm going to contract the virus. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. So, so uh, I, want, I want a weather forecast, glory to God. But, but I don't believe that when God appeared to Moses in the form of the burning bush and told him to go back to Egypt, a place where he had outstanding warrants. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Anybody ever been in trouble? You know what an outstanding warrant is. You failed, you failed to appear. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you failed to pay the fine. You know what an outstanding warrant. So, glory to God. Pharaoh had told him, look, if I see you back here, I'm going to kill you on sight. But now God tells him to go back to a place. Come on now. Has God ever told you something crazy? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and watch this. You got to be crazy enough to do it. My God, help me hold it go. Hallelujah. So, so, uh, now I don't think God told him all that he would be facing when dealing with Pharaoh. I don't think God told him that you would have to go through these ten plagues. Glory to God. I don't think God told him that even once you leave the people out and they are in the wilderness, glory to God, hallelujah, and you will have to face the Red Sea. I don't believe that God told them, hallelujah, that even after I bring them through the Red Sea, two weeks later, they'll be crying to go back into bondage. No, I don't believe, glory to God, that God told them that. <laughs> So sometimes I want God, I want God to give me a weather forecast with the word you gave me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I have a weather forecast, watch this. If I have a weather forecast, then I can bring my umbrella. I can bring my raincoat. 
I can bring my galosh if you give me a weather forecast, Lord. Hallelujah. But can I help somebody this morning? Glory to God. If his word is not enough for you to go, if his word is not enough for you to go, then he ain't calling you. You've got to believe that God's word is enough, hallelujah, for you to go, hallelujah. You have to take God at his word, which is the very essence of faith, oh my God. When you believe his word, watch this, his word will be your umbrella. His word will be your raincoat. His word will be your galoshes, hallelujah, so that when the storms rise against you, glory to God, his word will rise up in you. I said when the storm rises against you, his word will rise up in you. Can, let me give you a Bible. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, then the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so in Mark, in Mark 4, although the storm was tumultuous, although the storm put water into the ship, it didn't wake Jesus. It didn't wake him. Jesus was down in the ship fast asleep. He didn't hear the noise of the storm, but he heard the cries of his disciples. Good God Almighty. What am I saying? Glory to God. When God told you to do something, he knew storms would rise up in opposition. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's not going to come because the storm rose up, but he's going to come when you cry out. Hallelujah. Not as a crybaby. Glory to God. But you cry out in faith. Oh, my God, help me, Holy Ghost. God doesn't answer crybabies. But the Bible says that his eyes are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. I'm almost done. Bear with me. Glory to God. So I stopped by to let you know, BLFC, that sometimes, glory to God, God will allow certain storms to rise up in your life so that he can show the devil who he is and that he's still good and that he's still God. Mm. Anybody in a storm this morning? Glory to God. And you need God to flex his muscles to show the devil that he's still almighty, that he's still glory to God, all powerful. Tight, flex your muscles, God. Flex your muscles. Woo, glory to God. Didn't you know that God is a bodybuilder? He's building his body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes God got to show the devil who he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus, Jesus does this. Jesus rises up. Watch this. He rises up and he, the text says that he doesn't command the storm. He rebukes the storm. Mm. He rebukes the wind. Glory to God. He, he doesn't command the storm, but he rebukes the wind. So we must understand that the wind was the culprit. Mm, glory to God. Sometimes we go after the fruit and not the root. Jesus went to, glory to God, he went to the root. Mm. Now the Bible says that he rebukes the wind. Now whenever the Bible uses the word rebuke, it's in the context of coming against a spiritual attack. Are you with me? It's in the context of coming against a spiritual attack. The storm that's rising up in your life is a spiritual attack. And you need to wake up the Jesus in you. Come on now. And rebuke, glory to God, that wind. And let it know, storm, you can't stop me. Can I preach, glory to God? Type storm, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. Come on. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You can't stop me. So when Jesus rebuked the wind, the Bible says that things got quiet and still. Mm -hmm. Jesus now, Jesus' purpose to get on the ship was go to the coast of Gadarenes to deliver a man who was demon-possessed. Mm. That's why the storm rose up against them in the first place. Now, watch this now. The devil that was in the storm on the sea, watch this, he had experienced the power of Jesus when Jesus said, peace be still. He picks up the telephone and calls to the coast of Gadarenes and says, you might as well give up. He's too powerful. He defeated me and he can defeat you. When he shows up, you might as well surrender. Mm, glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, watch this. Your rebuke of your current storm uh, will make your next storm surrender. Good God I said if you stand up and rebuke your current storm, uh, it will cause your next storm to
to surrender. Can I preach? So when Jesus gets off the boat at the coast of the Gadarenes, the man who was demon possessed, he surrenders. How do you know that, Bishop? Because the Bible tells us that he comes to Jesus and said, look, uh, allow us to go into the pigs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And guess what the pigs did? The, pig, the pigs, glory to God, after the demons went into them, they went off the cliff and they drowned. Glory to God. See how God flipped the script? They was trying to drown them while they were on the sea in the storm. But God flipped the script and he drowned the enemy. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. God's about to flip the script in your life. When you were down, God's about to put you up. You were the tail, God's about to make you the head. You were the bar, God is about to make you the lender. Come on, somebody. You were beneath, God is about to place you above. I feel like preaching. Glory to God. But I'm going to teach. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The storm, glory to God, couldn't stop Jesus because he was too powerful. But I need you to know that the storm can't stop you either because you're just as powerful. Somebody tell me to preach. Mm -hmm. So in the text in Acts, the storm has a name. It is called Euroclidon. But in the text in Mark, the storm doesn't have a name. Glory to God. So whether your storm has a name or not, you need to understand that it cannot stop you. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, say you're preaching good, Bishop. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. If there's a storm of lack in your life, glory to God, tell that storm you can't stop me. If there's a storm of disease or infirmity rising up in your life, tell that storm it cannot stop you. If there's a storm of loneliness rising up in your life, tell that storm you can't stop me. Because glory to God, I got some in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's great. That won't let me go under. Oh my God. This message is important because you've been sidelined by the storms of life. Who glory to God. Hallelujah. You've been sidelined by the storms of life, but God sent me by this morning to tell you to get back in the game. Oh yes, get back in the game. Hallelujah. Put me in the game, coach. Oh yes, I'm ready to play. Put me in the game. Oh yes, I was sidelined for a minute, but now I'm ready to play, my God. Hallelujah, I'm almost done. Give me a minute. Glory to God. So we must understand that there are various types of storms. There are financial storms. There are health storms. Come on, somebody. There are storms spiritual storms. There are mental storms, emotional storms. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I need to let you know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I don't cry publicly. Don't mean I'm not in a storm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching now. But I need to let you know before we go home that there are three things or three phases that you go through. Now, you're either, watch this, you're either going into a storm, you're either in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. Can I preach? So in order for you to be who God created you to be, you can't let the storm tame you. You've got to learn to tame the storm. <laughs> ah, glory to God. The, the storm can't stop you, saints. It can't stop you. Glory to God. So the storm can't stop you. But what the storm can do is reveal who's in you. I stopped by to let you know I know you love your first lady I know you love me as your pastor Hallelujah I know you love me But God wanted me to tell you That the storm can't stop us But it can reveal who's on the inside of us Can I preach like I feel it What the storm did Hallelujah was revealed Who was on the inside of me It couldn't stop me But it did reveal Ha, hallelujah, who's on the inside of me? Can I preach like I feel it? My God, the storm revealed, not that I'm a superman, but I got a superman on the inside of me. The devil just came against you because he thought you were only Clark Kent. But what the storm did, it revealed that you were Superman. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I've got a Superman on the inside of me, my God. Guess what, saints? So do you. My God, can I preach? I feel like preaching this morning. 
Let me tell you something I've learned. You may get the virus, but it don't mean the virus has to have you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brittany Sheila, be healed. Hallelujah. Sue Giles, be healed. Glory to God. Tim Sheely, be healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. John Robinson, be healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got a superman on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory. You got to learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When things come against us, come on. The way you wake up, the way you wake things up is you pray in the Holy Ghost. There was a movie, and I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Give me, give me one minute. There was a movie Spike Lee did called Miracle at Santa Ana. And there was a phrase they kept saying through the whole movie is don't wake up the sleeping giant. You don't want to wake the sleeping giant. I, I want to ask you this. Did you let Jesus go to sleep in your life? <laughs> well, all you got to do, remember, is cry out in faith. Because he's still on board. Cry out in faith. And he'll show up and show out. Amen. This storm can't stop you. This storm can't stop you. Glory to God. Namasata ma kere mo kuda basa. I kara bo se kere andara bo sata. Kore mande arabo sika. Have you ever wondered how big cruise ships are able to, to float on water and not sink? It is how they are designed. You are designed. You are designed to float when everybody else is sinking. You were created to be on top. Do you hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. I want to encourage you. You were created, glory to God, to navigate through every storm of life. I love you with the love of the Lord. I want to pray with you. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, glory to God, I want you to repent of your sins right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For every sin I've ever committed, Lord, I trust in your, your blood, Lord. I trust in it now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, I believe that you died for me, God. I believe that you rose on the third, and I believe you have all power in your hand, God. I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wash me. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe that you can fill me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right now, even as... I'm praying, God, I, I receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you right now for your word being alive and true. And God, I thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. We thank you for healing bodies for strengthening minds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Father, we come against the spirit of depression right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, have your way. And we thank you for it now. Amen. I hope we've said some things to encourage your heart and bless you. Amen. Don't forget to sow. Amen. Don't forget to sow into this word. Amen. Don't forget to sow. You see, it's, it's on the screen. We are Victorious One. Uh, we have uh, that's our cash app and then our PayPal. VLFC2008 at yahoo.com. You can sow your seed. Some of y'all have already sown even before you came online. Thank you so much, amen, for all of the faithful supporters and leaders of Victorious Life, amen. The Victorious Life Fellowship Church, thank you so much. Thank you for all the congregants and lay people who work behind the scenes, who pray, who cover First Lady and I in prayer, amen. You may not be the one behind the camera, but you are the ones who helped put me here. So I thank God for you and your faithfulness. Amen. God told me to tell you this. I was coming into the house on Friday, taking off my shoes near the shoe rack, and I was, I, was, I was saying this. I was saying, tithing is not a church thing. Tithing is a God thing. It's not a church thing. Abraham tied to God before there was a church. Come on. Hallelujah. It's a God thing. I I've only been to a few churches all my life, but whenever I left the church, I still tithe because it wasn't a church thing, it's a God thing. When you release your tithe, when you give your tithe and your offering, guess what? You God, God's, God's blessing, his blessing cloud follows you wherever you go. So I want to encourage you to do that. We've we got a special campaign going on. We're going to bless all of our 
children, amen, the, ch the, the children, amen, of the parents or grandparents of our church, we want to bless y'all with the gift card, amen, the members now, and uh, we're going to bless you with the gift card to Target, amen, so you can go in and, and do your own shopping. We know this has been a tough year, amen, and so we're giving every child a $25 gift card on next Saturday at noon, but we want y'all to be a part of that too. We know we have people who want to give and support that, so please let me know you're going to support that, amen, when you fill out your arm, um, when, you, when you text um, your information in to pay, amen, just let us know um, Christmas gift for kids. Amen. Kids at Christmas. You can do that. And that, that'll go directly towards that. Now, we're going to do it. We're going to do it now because God has blessed Victoria's life. But I, I, I believe that during these times, if you have it, amen, it's a blessing to be able to do it. I know Sister Sister Miles has already given, and I think Sister Robinson and Deacon Robinson have already given, and First Lady and I have done some things. And so I thank y'all for all that you're doing and how you're supporting. So, amen, continue to be a blessing. I mean, y'all just wonderful people. And First Lady and I are just so, so honored to be able to pastor such wonderful people of God. And so, amen, we hope that we have said some things to encourage your hearts and minds. We'll be here on Wednesday, amen. And please, saints, I know y'all love me. I know you're praying for me. Please don't worry about me. And, and please don't pity me. Please pray for me, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. When you pray for me, I feel it. I feel the strength of God and the power of God. Hallelujah. God is able, amen. God bless you. I want you to have a great Sunday afternoon. Enjoy your family, and we love you. We'll see you on Wednesday night.